I'll give you a rundown of some of the tools that I've collected over the years and the tools that I suggest. This is only a basic layout, you can add more to it. There's also a whole lot of other brands that do a number of these other tools as well. But I'll just show you what I work with. You can take it from there and then come and talk to us. Okay, in the old days, you get a sharp knife and you try and chop the parts off the sprues and all the rest of it, end up cutting yourself or the kids or whatever. In this day and age, there's a better tool to get hold of. Actually comes out of the uh, electrical industry. This is a sprue cutter. On the back side of it, which is flat, you put that against the part and snip it. So it just takes it off the sprue nicely. What happens then is you just get a bit of sandpaper, you can clean it up, or if you feel it, you can get the knife fit blade in and just take that little bit of edge off. These are a great little tool. There's a number of brands around, anything from, uh, I think this one's about 17 bucks, and you can spend up to $75 if you're that serious about it. A lot of it's to do with how uh, well the uh, cutters are. Don't use these for cutting metals or heavy duty wood or anything like that, they're not for that. Just brew cutter, keep it for that and keep it simple, go from there. Saying that, you still need a good knife. So I'd probably, I recommend this number one knife. It's a good unit, uh, it's got a padded handle so if you're doing a lot of work you, you're not getting your handles. Also this has got a little knurled section on the end of it so that when you put it on the desk, and it rolls off and doesn't stab you in the leg or the foot or the floor or whatever. I recommend probably a heavy duty knife as well. This is good for cutting woods and things like that. If you look at um, heavy duty plastic and stuff like that, you may need something like that. But if you're gonna go really heavy duty plastic, cut heavy sprues off, then I would look at something like that. Now that's gonna give you the heavy duty handle anyway so that you can then put another blade in so this is a, the blade for it, so it works quite well. Um, you can go, there's another way of doing that as well. If you're cutting or a scratch builder, this is another great little thing. This actually has a miter box included in it, so that you've got angles that you can cut out. You've got slots in the bottom, as you can see, where you can lay plastic or wood or whatever in it, saw through it, little slots in there, cut and go from there. A good cutting mat is always an essential tool, mostly because it gives you a bit of flexibility. So if you're using just a, the table or, a, or a, an area that's just got no give or anything else, it tends to let the part, but this will give you a little bit of flexibility so that you can dig the knife in and, and cut through properly. Uh, it's also just handy for, for keeping the area clean. It means you're not messing up the table. Great for kids if they're working at the kitchen table and stuff like that, so they don't go cutting through. This one also does include a knife and some blades as well. It's also got all these radiuses squares so that you can line things up, make sure that they're all correctly lined up and everything else. Very handy if you're doing props and stuff like that. Along other lines, uh, you need to file some files. So I would be looking at either this sort of thing or this sort of thing. Now these are nice little handle with a set of files. Now the files obviously can be used independently to the handle, but uh, there's six different, different styles. There's a cutting style, a triangle style, circular, and a square, things like that. If you want to go for something a little bit more, there's this set, and this comes with a number of different files and styles. Uh, again, same sort of principle, nice little unit. Good trick with these is uh, get a hold of a wire brush and things like that, just to clean them out every so often because the stuff will build up, or the uh, sprue stuff will build up in it and, and clog it. So you want to clear that. The only other tool, another tool that you might want to add to it, is a sanding stick. Now these are very handy, they're nice, they've got a little point there, they've got different coarse uh, units in there, uh, sticks. These are great because you just flick them and move them around. Now when I was talking before about files, they're metal files. Sanding sticks are like a file, but they're more for just tidying up, cleaning up, doing the areas like that. The metal files are very handy if you've used super glue or things like that, so it can help knock it down a little bit quicker. Um, also metal files tend to clean up uh, all the little um, uh, flash and that that's left on parts and things like that. This is handy, but they, they can get into smaller areas and things like that and, and clean up. I use that more for the general purpose modelling. I use my sanding sticks and things like that for doing the final edges and cleaning up edges and things like that. Tweezers, always handy. Number of different tweezers you can get. A flat nose and a curved. So obviously the flat nose is very handy for placing parts and everything else. The curved one is also handy if you're getting into a spot 
that you can't quite reach in. So with the curve on it, it has a little bit of hook in so that you can do that. Yeah. Now this will give you, this gives you a flat, a curved, a flat for doing decals, which is very handy. And then there's this one. One of them is a, this is a, what they call a cross tweezer. It's actually closed already, but you press it open to put the piece in and then it snaps shut. So it holds the part another way. Clamps are always handy. This is one style. This is like a trigger version. You pull the trigger to pull it tight. It's got quite a, a big throat on it so that you've got plenty of room to put things in. Pull it up tight. Good way to hold parts together or large fuselages. If, you're, if you've got a part that you want to hang on to and then add a part to, they're very handy for holding one and then adding the other and then a little bit of glue. So that's one way of clamping it. The other way is to use these littler clamps. Now these are friction based, these are much smaller. You pull them up, slide the piece down, lock it in. There are a little gap there that you can sort of make sure that if you're using sort of rounded parts or square parts, whatever, and they just hold it. Again, it comes down to if you're trying to gluing something and you want it to set properly, especially if you're using um, glues that take a little while to glue and you want to hold it and move on to other things. You don't want to be sitting there holding on to it. So these are also very handy. Or if you've got a combination of parts that you're trying to hold together all in one hit, these are very handy for doing that. Well, this is another good little product. This can sit on your desk. When I was talking about holding parts and stuff like that, this is another way. This is called the helping hands. What this does, you can hold parts in the two gator clips and add other parts. And also the magnifying glass just makes sure that you've got you're precise on what you're doing, especially for small parts or etched metal. If, you've, if you're folding etched metal and everything else, it's always handy for that. Uh, or if you're like me, you need good, better eyesight, you've got a magnifying glass to make sure you know what you're doing. Little drills. This is a little drill. This is called a pin vise. Now this is a automatic, like a manual one. Drill bit goes in the top. Very handy if you've got a drill, like on a ship, you want to drill out the portholes. You've got battleships that you want to drill out the gun barrels and things like that. Very handy for that. The beauty of this is you control the speed. So you basically hold it, spin it so that you've got control, everything else. Uh, you can buy drill bits. We've got everything from very, very, very fine drill bits up to uh, about 0.5 of a mil of a drill for drill bits. Very handy for modelers. Uh, good for cleaning out areas as well. So if you've got a um, joint that need, that's got a pin and the pin's not sitting properly, you can drill out the little hole a little bit better and things like that. If you've got to add parts like on a wing, you've know, got to add rocket rails and stuff like that, great little way of doing it rather than to use the tip of the knife trying to scrape it out and everything else. That's what I consider my basic toolkit. Uh, a good little trick is go to someone like Bunnings or somewhere like that and get yourself a little fishing tackle box. Very good for keeping all your tools in, very good for portable. Great for kids to have an area that they can put all their tools in and things like that. So other than that, um, essentially, the rest of it is all as you develop your modeling and you can add more and more tools to it. As I said before, there's lots of brands with lots of tools. Come down and have a talk to us and I'll tell you more about them.